Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of The Hungry Tiger of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson, continuing, uh, founded on and continuing the famous Oz stories by L. Frank Baum. So I kind of read this as a buddy read with Joel Swagman. I think by this point Joel's called it quits and he isn't reading these anymore, which is fair enough. Uh, he was only really reading them when he could get hold of like the public domain uh, free editions, which I think we've kind of lapsed into copyright territory by this point. Um, but yeah, I do encourage you to check out Joel's channel, especially because he's reviewed a lot of the earlier books in the Oz series. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb. I'm going to go through and check out my tabs and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. I will warn you, I stopped tabbing about halfway through because there wasn't too much interesting there. Um, I think my main thoughts on this one was that the plot was just even more over the place than it usually is to the point at which I just sort of stopped suspending my disbelief and it really wasn't really absorbed by the story, you know. Dane reads. But anyway, we'll go and have a look. So The Hungry Tiger of Oz, in which the winsome hungry tiger is whisked away to the kingdom of Rash in an attempt to satisfy his appetite. Little Betsy Bobbin and the perky vegetable man join him and young Princess Reddy in a search for the three magic Rash rubies. They travel through the Gnome Kingdom, whereupon the tiger is captured by the giant bigwigs. Meanwhile, Princess Ozma herself is kidnapped from Emerald City by Atmosphere, the airman. Will the rash rubies be magic enough to rescue our friends, defeat the wicked Pasha, and return ready to his throne as the rightful ruler of Rash? Let's find out. Except you're not going to find out, because I'm not going to tell you how it ends. But, I mean, you can pretty much tell with books like this. They're gonna, it's going to be alright, you know? So somebody, one of the cooks, burns a pudding early on, and we get... Punish this pudding burner, which I think is just a cracking line. Most of these, what I've tabbed out, are just really good lines. So we get uh, the line, a saucy but serviceable brute, which I joke to my girlfriend, that's what she is. Um, this also directly addresses the reader, so it says, uh, It was night time when Ippity and the Hungry Tiger arrived at the Pink Palace. Travelling by hurricane is a hair-raising experience, let me tell you. And I, as an editor, would have flagged that up and be like, don't directly address the reader. It pulls them out of the story, and that's exactly what it did here. And there's a sad singer, and uh, I believe this is the Hungry Tiger. He says, you may go now. Your singing is outrageous, but you are neither wicked enough to satisfy my conscience nor fat enough to satisfy my appetite. And that could be describing me. We also get the line, uh, I do not know whether his tears were from grief, gratitude, or onions. He had eaten all three by this time. Which is a good line, but again, that I do not know, it kind of... I don't know, breaks the spell of the omniscient storyteller, I suppose. And this could be describing me. His body was more like an enormous potato than anything else. And his arms and legs were long, wiry roots of some coarse vegetable fibre. That's what happens if you're vegan for long enough. We get, as you probably have guessed already, which again just directly addresses the reader. And another line that I read to my girlfriend, I said, Permit me to observe that your highness is as beautiful as a banana and fragrant as an onion. Very romantic. Someone finds a razor and fingers it lovingly, which just sounds painful. And another great little exclamation here I want to highlight. Great cauliflowers! I'm going to use that in future. So yeah, The Hungry Tiger of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. As I say, I don't think it's the best of the Oz books, not even the best of the ones that uh, Thompson has done. But it was still worth reading. I am still going to keep continuing the series. I mean, this is book 20 by now. Um, and I think there are about another 25 to go. So I'm going to keep slowly but surely reading through the series. Uh, so expect more reviews soon. In the meantime, I gave The Hungry Tiger of Oz a 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Hungry Tiger of Oz by L. Frank Baum. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye